In April 2025, geologists made a discovery at Yellowstone National Park that sent shockwaves through the scientific community. A mysterious one three-foot wide hole filled with eerie milky blue water had appeared seemingly overnight in the Norris Geyser Basin. Within hours, the U.S. Geological Survey issued a warning that would make your blood run cold. If Yellowstone's supervolcano erupts, it could trigger a global catastrophe unlike anything humanity has ever witnessed. But what scientists discovered next changed everything. This is the story of how close we came to understanding one of Earth's most dangerous geological features and why what happened next is both terrifying and fascinating. Before we dive into what really happened in April 2025, you need to understand what makes Yellowstone so uniquely dangerous. This isn't just another volcano. Beneath the stunning geysers, hot springs, and wildlife that attract millions of tourists every year lies one of the most powerful geological time bombs on the planet. Yellowstone sits atop a supervolcano, a term that immediately sounds ominous, and for good reason. While a regular volcano might destroy a city or a region, a supervolcano has the potential to alter the course of human civilization itself. The last time Yellowstone experienced a super eruption was 640,000 years ago, and it created a crater so massive that it forms much of the park we see today. But in April 2025, something changed. Something that made scientists around the world hold their breath and ask a single terrifying question. Is it waking up? The morning of April 15, 2025, started like any other day at Yellowstone's Norris Geyser Basin. Park rangers conducting routine thermal monitoring noticed something unusual on their readings. Heat signatures had spiked overnight in an area that had been relatively stable for months. When the geological team arrived on site, they found something that shouldn't have been there. A perfectly circular hole, approximately 13 feet in diameter, filled with an otherworldly milky blue water. The water's unusual color came from suspended minerals and silica particles, indicating that whatever created this hole had access deep underground thermal systems. But it wasn't just the hole itself that alarmed scientists. The ground around it was hot to the touch, and steam rose continuously from the water surface. Thermal imaging revealed that the water temperature exceeded 160 degrees Fahrenheit. More concerning, Seismic monitors had recorded a series of small tremors in the days leading up to the hole's appearance. Dr. Michael Johnson, the lead geologist from the U.S. Geological Survey's Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, immediately assembled an emergency response team. They collected water samples, measured ground deformation, and analyzed seismic data. What they found in those first 48 hours would trigger an urgent warning to federal authorities. The hole had formed directly above a previously unmapped hydrothermal vent system. Ground-penetrating radar showed that below the surface, a network of fractures had opened up, creating pathways for superheated water and gases to reach the surface. This wasn't just a new hot spring. It was evidence that something was changing deep beneath Yellowstone. Within 72 hours of the discovery, the U.S. Geological Survey issued a formal assessment that grabbed headlines worldwide. The language was careful, but unmistakable in its gravity. Changes in Yellowstone's hydrothermal systems could be precursors to increased volcanic activity. To understand why this warning sent shockwaves through the scientific community, you need to understand what a Yellowstone super eruption would actually mean. And I'm not talking about a standard volcanic eruption. I'm talking about an event so massive it defies normal comprehension. If Yellowstone's supervolcano were to experience a super eruption today, here's what would happen. Within minutes of the initial explosion, pyroclastic flows would race across the landscape at speeds exceeding 100 miles per hour. These aren't just rivers of lava. They're superheated clouds of gas ash, and rock fragments with temperatures reaching 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Nothing survives a pyroclastic flow. 
not buildings, not forests, not people. Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho would be devastated almost instantly. Ashfall would bury everything within a 500-mile radius under several feet of volcanic debris. But the real horror begins when you zoom out. Within 24 hours, volcanic ash would blanket most of the continental United States. Crops would fail immediately. Airports would shut down, potentially for months. Infrastructure would collapse under the weight of ash accumulation. And this is just the beginning. The ash cloud would spread into the atmosphere, circulating around the globe within weeks. Global temperatures would drop by an average of 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit as sunlight is blocked by the ash. Veil. This volcanic winter could last for years, triggering worldwide crop failures, mass starvation, and the collapse of supply chains. Scientists estimate that a Yellowstone super eruption could directly or indirectly cause the deaths of hundreds of millions of people. It's the kind of event that doesn't just change history, it defines entire geological eras. And in April 2025, the appearance of that mysterious blue hole raised the terrifying possibility that such an event might not be as far in the future as we thought. But science doesn't deal in panic. It deals in data, and as more teams descended on Yellowstone to investigate the hole, a more complex picture began to emerge. Advanced seismic analysis revealed something crucial that initial assessments had missed. The tremors recorded before the hole's appearance weren't continuous. They were discrete events, small explosions that had occurred over several days, possibly even weeks. Dr. Sarah Chen, a volcanologist specializing in hydrothermal systems, led a team that used cutting-edge technology to map what had happened beneath the surface. They discovered that the hole wasn't created by a single catastrophic event. Instead, it was the result of a series of smaller hydrothermal explosions. Here's what actually happened. Deep, underground, superheated water became trapped in a sealed chamber. As pressure built over time, the weakest points in the rock began to fail. Each small explosion sent shockwaves through the ground and released steam and water. Eventually, these repeated explosions carved out a channel to the surface, and when the final barrier failed, the hole we see today opened up. This distinction between a single massive explosion and multiple smaller events was crucial. It meant that what created the hole wasn't necessarily an escalation in volcanic activity, but rather a normal, if dramatic, hydrothermal process. Further investigation revealed even more reassuring details. GPS, monitoring stations around Yellowstone, which can detect ground deformation with millimeter precision, showed no significant uplift. If magma were rising from depth, the ground would swell upward, but the measurements were stable. Gas monitoring also showed nothing unusual. Volcanic eruptions are typically preceded by changes in gas emissions, particularly carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide. But samples taken from the new hole and surrounding thermal features showed gas compositions consistent with normal hydrothermal activity. The magma chambers beneath Yellowstone, which scientists continuously monitor using seismic tomography, showed no signs of new magma injection. The two main reservoirs, one about 5 miles deep and another at 15 to 30 miles depth, remained in their long-term steady state. So if this wasn't a sign of an imminent eruption, what exactly is going on beneath Yellowstone? The answer is both fascinating and complex. Yellowstone sits atop what geologists call a hotspot, a plume of superheated rock rising from deep within Earth's mantle. Unlike most volcanoes, which form at the boundaries of tectonic plates, Yellowstone's hotspot is stationary while the North American plate moves over it, kind of like a blowtorch held beneath a moving sheet of metal. Over millions of years, this hotspot has created a massive volcanic system. The two main magma chambers contain enough molten and partially molten rock to create an eruption 1,000 times more powerful than the 1980 Mount Street Helens eruption. 
The upper chamber alone is estimated to contain 200 to 600 cubic kilometers of magma. But here's the critical point that often gets lost in sensational headlines. Most of that magma is actually not molten. Advanced seismic imaging suggests that only 5 to 15 percent of the upper chamber is actually liquid magma. The rest is a crystal mush, rock that's hot but solid. For a super eruption to occur, several conditions must be met simultaneously. First, you need enough liquid magma to form what geologists call a critical melt fraction. Second, that magma needs to be buoyant enough to overcome the weight of the rock above it. Third, you need a trigger mechanism, usually a massive injection of new magma from below, or a major earthquake that fractures the chamber walls. Current evidence suggests none of these conditions are being met. In fact, modern monitoring indicates that Yellowstone's magma system may actually be cooling over time. This doesn't mean it's dying. Volcanic systems operate on timescales of hundreds of thousands of years. But it does mean an eruption isn't imminent. Scientists estimate that if Yellowstone were building toward a super eruption, we would see warning signs for decades, possibly even centuries, before the event. Massive ground deformation, sustained increases in seismic activity, major changes in hydrothermal features, and significant alterations in gas emissions would all precede such an event. Today, Yellowstone remains one of the most monitored volcanic systems on Earth, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory a partnership between the USGS, Yellowstone National Park, and several universities operates a sophisticated network of instruments throughout the region. Over 50 real-time seismic stations detect earthquakes and ground vibrations. GPS sensors measure ground deformation with incredible precision. Thermal monitoring tracks changes in heat output from geysers, hot springs, and fumaroles. Satellite-based radar can detect centimeter-scale changes in ground elevation across the entire caldera. And what does all this monitoring tell us? Yellowstone is alive but stable. The park experiences between 1,000 and 3,000 earthquakes per year, most too small to feel. The ground rises and falls in cycles that scientists have observed for decades. Hydrothermal features constantly change, New geysers appear, old ones stop erupting, and pools change color and temperature. All of this is normal for Yellowstone. It's one of the most geologically active places on Earth, and that activity is precisely what creates the spectacular features that make it so famous. As for that mysterious blue hole discovered in April 2025, it's now just another hydrothermal feature in the landscape filled with them. Scientists continue to monitor it, as they do all thermal features in the park, but it's no longer seen as a harbinger of doom. The story of the April 2025 discovery at Yellowstone teaches us an important lesson about the difference between scientific concern and sensationalism. Yes, Yellowstone is a supervolcano. Yes, it will erupt again someday. But that day is almost certainly hundreds of thousands of years in the future. The appearance of the blue hole wasn't a false alarm. It was a reminder that Yellowstone is a dynamic, living geological system that we must continue to study and monitor. Every change, every earthquake, every new thermal feature gives scientists valuable data about how this massive volcanic system operates. So while Yellowstone's supervolcano isn't going to erupt tomorrow, or next year, or even in the next thousand years, it remains one of Earth's most powerful and fascinating geological features. And thanks to modern monitoring technology and dedicated scientists, we'll have plenty of warning if that ever changes. The Blue Hole of 2025? It's now just another beautiful, mysterious feature in America's first and most spectacular national park. A reminder that sometimes, the most frightening discoveries lead to the most fascinating science. If you found this story as captivating as we did, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell.
We're constantly exploring the most incredible scientific discoveries and natural phenomena from around the world. What geological mystery should we investigate next? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and remember, stay curious, stay informed, and don't believe everything you read in a headline.